So one of the key things there is that if you want to have your maximum amount of freedom, you have to spend the minimum amount of money. Correct. And it seems like you have gotten that down super well. I live off of very little. I try to save as much as I can in case the engine goes or the transmission goes. Or I look at it as it's, it's pretty much like putting money into your house. Hi, right, everyone. Welcome back to my next video. Today, we're going to meet Michelle. Hi. Hi, Michelle. And you've been on the road for a little while now. Yes. And how long have you been on the road? Um, I'm finishing up my sixth year. Six years. Now yeah, that's anymore. That's an old time. It is. And are you full time? I'm full time. I've been full time since day one. And uh, what was the main motive to make you go uh, full time um, RVing? I went with my parents to Alaska for a month, traveled around, and thought it was a great lifestyle. I was not in the best marriage, but I figured once my kids were out of the house, I would be able to maybe get out on the road. Uh, it happened a little bit faster than I thought because my house caught fire. Oh no. And uh, while we were rebuilding the house and we were in an apartment, uh, my husband was not great. And it uh, turns out that uh, I left a little bit sooner than I thought. You're in a minivan now? I'm in a minivan now. What, did you start out in that? Um, I started for a very, very brief time in a Honda Civic and uh, found a minivan because I couldn't find a big van at the time. Right. Um, Drove it out to California, built it out of my parents' house, and stayed there for a little bit while I built it out. Um, after two and a half years, I moved into a big van, and then the gas prices shot up. And I had a dog at the time, and I started really monitoring where I was driving and how I was going because the gas was so expensive that uh, I've been in this one just about a year now. This is my third van. And you're getting great gas miles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, even I put more aggressive tires on, I'm still getting like 24, 25 miles in a gallon. So you're going to stay in the minivan? I think so. Yeah, I think so. And so how are you supporting yourself on the road? Uh, right now I do seasonal jobs. I try to work about seven months out of the year. Um, I backpack, so I'm trying to flip my, where I'm not working summers, I'm trying to work fall and winter so I can take my summers off and backpack. Um, so mainly seasonal jobs. I do the sugar beet harvest in Michigan. Uh, going on, I did six years for that. Uh, I take jobs at resorts, doing housekeeping, front desk, uh, campgrounds, campground host, office, whatever they'll have me do. And you're going to go do the Pacific Coast Trail. Pacific Coast Trail, yes. Yeah, that's, uh, that's yep. how long is that? Uh, it's going to take me about 160 days, I think. Oh. And I'll be leaving from Campo, California on March 3rd. And how many miles does that work out to be a day? 20? Um, I'm, if I can average 17.2, that'll be good. 17.2. Yeah, I'm going to start out probably slow, but they say you make a big deal. Right. See what happens if I make it all the way through. 10%, 10 to 15% make it. I plan on being in that 10 to 15%. Good. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good life goal to have. It is. Um, really an amazing one. I have that, to hurry and do it so I can get back to work in Michigan at the Beehive. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, can we take a look around inside your rig? Absolutely. All right, let's do that. All right. So have you found it hard to live in a minivan? You don't have much space. Um. It was a little bit hard downsizing again, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I did get rid of quite a lot, but uh, I made it so I could sit up in bed. That was the most important thing. It is, yeah. Yeah, the most important thing, being able to sit up, being able to move around and function with the van the way it is. And you found uh, storage everywhere you needed it? I did. It's a Dodge uh, Grand Caravan, and I bought it specifically because it had the stow-and-go seats. So I took the seats out, took the back seat out. I built uh, the floor in four pieces. Actually, the floor is in five pieces, so if something happens, I can take it all back out. But uh, I made storage underneath. You want to see the storage underneath? Yeah, let's see that. So I have under the bed, there's another compartment that has my battery, my inverter, all my solar, and everything's under there. And then this side here is basically my pantry. Oh, my. Yeah, it keeps anything and everything that I need to store. It stays really cool under there. You did a really nice uh, finish on that floor. Thank you. I built the entire van with a jigsaw and a drill. That is really, really beautiful. Um, these are two cabinets that I got at uh, Amazon, and I put them together and just kind of built a veneer around, and you can, you'll be able to see it better from the other side. Um, put this little flip-up cutting board, so I mm -hmm. extra workspace. Big thing for me is counter space, making right. sure I have enough counter space. Right. Um, I took out the driver's seat so I could put the refrigerator, and I started with a little Dometic refrigerator, and it finally died, so I bought this one. It's just a cheap Chinese one, but yeah. it, it works really well. I built the bed so that the bed does prop up like a recliner. And then the, this, this part here is split, and this part here flips up, so I can also get to it. Get to store it under the bed this way as well. Oh, my. Yeah, that's a lot of storage. It's got a lot of storage. Kind of took a knockoff from the uh, Volkswagen and built that, so put a little bit of storage in there. Mm-hmm. Very nice. 
and uh, everything runs off the solar, except for I do have a generator for the to- I just bought the toaster oven, so I'm trying that out with the generator, mm-hmm. and that seems to be working pretty well. Uh, you mean a gas-powered generator? Yeah, yeah, it's a little gas-powered champion. Right. So it runs uh, runs just about everything I need. Um, mostly I do the solar, though. I have 180 watts on the roof, 100 amp hours of lithium battery, and a 3,000 watt inverter, I think. And uh, runs my my little electric, electric skillet. skillet. I have a little coffee pot that I run. I can boil water. Uh, runs all my lights. So the back, um, this actually is just strapped in with bungee cords, and it does come out, and then that flips up, and there's all kinds of storage under the floor. Mm-hmm. All the things that I don't use so often. I have my water jug with my little faucet. Um, I decided not to put a sink in this one because I wound up just storing things in the sink the last time. So I just have a little bucket that I use if I want to mm-hmm. use it as a sink. I built the, the window, little window covers on here. They didn't want to stay up. They shrunk even though no matter how big I made them, they still shrunk. So I just hold them up with some tension rods from Walmart. Mm-hmm. Very. That's a very good idea. They're Reflectix with uh, fabric on both sides. Mm-hmm. Nice. And the extra storage? Yes. I bought this for the big van and it swings away. Oh, that's a nice Which is great. And I use it to cook outside a lot. I'll cook on top of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I couldn't sell it with the big van. She didn't want it. And then when I decided I couldn't sell it, everybody wanted to give me 100 bucks for it. I said, I might as well just put it on here. So right. went to U-Haul, had them put a hitch on it. And here I have an extra storage. It's got all my tools, my, my leveling blocks, all that kind of thing. And your generator. That's a place for your generator to live it's then. place for my generator to live. It's a Champion 2000 watt. Towers everything I need. Mm-hmm. It really is one of the, uh, I think, one of the better minivans I've seen. I love, these are, did you already have these two cabinets? Uh, the two cabinets I just bought for like $29 each off of Amazon. Oh, nice. And then a little set of drawers from Walmart. And I just wanted it to look more like furniture, so I got a real thin sheet of plywood, stained it, and put it all the way around. So you're cooking with electric now? Um, I cook with electric. I also have a butane propane stove that I use as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I find that that's a lot easier to use unless I'm outside. If I'm outside, I'll use the butane out here. I have Mm -hmm. it stored in here. And, of course, you have all your backpacking gear. I do. I have all my backpacking gear, which I've been trying to get a lot more use out of lately. (laughs) (laughs) Really nice. Thank you. Really, really nice. It's something I highly recommend for people, too, is one of these. I put this in. Oh, it's a uh, port mm-hmm. that you can plug. I plug straight into the generator. Mm-hmm. And then I have a power cord inside, which I haven't quite figured out what to do with yet. And how much solar do you have? I have 180 watts on the roof. It's good. 100 amp hour lithium battery. Good. One it's... of the first Battleborn batteries that came out. <laughs> it's almost seven years old. Wow. So anyway, yeah, they make great they stuff. Do. They do. Really, really good. So you paid a pretty penny for that. I did. I bought it at one of the first van builds they did, and uh, it's been running great. And you got an awning, I saw. I do have an awning. I put that on in July. And I don't use it as much as I thought I would, but it's really nice to have. And I've got it down to where I can set it up in about seven minutes and break it down in about three. Yeah, you've got it really set up nice. And uh, pretty minimal investment. Yeah, the two cabinets were probably next to nothing. Right. Yeah, the cabinets, I think, were $29 each. The wood, the plywood was expensive. Plywood had just gone up. Yeah. But uh, I tried to use every piece that I could, and I think I did the whole thing with maybe three sheets of plywood. I just wanted it to look nice so I have a nice cozy place. I mean, I call it my cocoon. Yeah. So when I when I work certain jobs and I have to use it for work, it's not quite as comfy as it's not quite as safe and comfortable when I have all my work things in there, but I get the beet harvest. I had hard hats and safety vests and extra glasses and things in there, so right. it took up a lot of room. And I'm assuming you don't feel like uh, you're missing out on anything? I don't. No, I, I I don't. When I go stay at my parents or at a friend's house or something for a little while, I'm really happy to get back in the van. Right. You know, I, I don't see all the need for all the extra space and all the extra stuff. So I have to ask, uh, if I don't, I'll get yelled at. Uh, how do you go to the bathroom? How do I go to the bathroom? Well, I started with a five-gallon bucket with the luggable loot top on it, and right. that just kept getting moved from the back to the front to the back to the front. I went down to a three-gallon bucket, which fit under the bed of the last van. Um, I found that it was more of a pain than not, so I literally use a McDonald's cup in my trash can. Wow. So very, very minimalistic. And then showers? Showers, um, I do bucket baths most of the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I do have one of those little kind that you drop in a bucket of water, um, but I can be in as a backpacker. I'm learning to do on less and less every time. 
Um, so I can pretty much take a shower, wash my hair and everything with about two, two quarts of water. So one of the key things there is that if you want to have your maximum amount of freedom, you have to spend the minimum amount of money. Correct. And it seems like you have gotten that down super well. I live off of very little. I try to save as much as I can in case the engine goes or the transmission goes or I need to fix something on the van. That's I look at it as it's, it's when I put money into the van, it's pretty much like putting money into your house. Right. So I don't mind if I have to do something. But, yeah, I live off of very little. Um, I travel light. I travel fast. Um, not a lot of people keep up with me that way. <laughs> you know? So most of the time I'm by myself. I've traveled with people occasionally, but it uh, seems easy to go light and fast by myself. <laughs> yes. If if you want light and fast, alone is the way. Yes. Pretty rare to find someone else that wants to move at the same speed. That's true. I've done a couple of relationships on the road where they've had their rig. I've had my rig, and it's nice to be with someone who has something you can stand up in. Yes. But it lasts for a while, and then I kind of like to be by myself. So. Right. right. Okay. I'm good with it. <laughs> and so you've been with the Beat Harvest six years, so you really recommend it. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, I know that if you uh, if uh, you recommend people who do take a job there, you can get a, uh, uh, a bonus. Right. They give a referral for each person that you refer. And so uh, tell the audience your name. So, And that's okay. what they do? They give your name? Sure. Yep. They give my name. Uh, just say that Michelle Pelosi, P-A-L-L-O-Z-Z-I, -Z -Z referred you. And uh, you just need to show up and do your job and, and do a good job for me. And I'll get the little bonus for it. Yeah. Every so, little bit helps. Yeah. Everybody go and do that now. And it's the Michigan Harvest, not the North Dakota Harvest. So. And it only works at one? Uh, no, they do it in Mich in North Dakota, too. But I, I'm i working particularly for Michigan. So I'm looking to recoup for Michigan. We need a lot of work cappers out there. Mm -hmm. So we have 14 piling grounds and four factories, I believe, Wow. that we staff with primarily work cappers. Wow. Well, that's a, that's a huge... It's a uh, huge endeavor. Yeah. So it's almost certainly someone has a job waiting for them there. Absolutely. Yep. I like Michigan better. I have some family out there, and I've made some really close friends. And you really do make a family with your beet family. So, so uh, for those people who might be interested in the beet harvest, how would they how would they pursue that? Um, I believe the website. I'd have to double check it, but I believe it's the MichiganBeetHarvest.com. Okay, good. And they can fill out an online application. Um, someone will contact them, and then going forward, they contact them every month to see if they still want to do it, if anything's changed. Um, until it gets closer to the arrival, and then they give them an arrival date, set them up in a campground that's paid for. Um, you have no expenses other than your food and propane. You go to work at your site. You're in and out of there. Usually it lasts right about 21 days. Mm -hmm. So it's a great way to make some quick cash. Yeah, and, and you can make a lot of money in a very brief period Absolutely. of time. Absolutely. And in Michigan, you're on Saginaw Bay, so you're in the most beautiful place that you could possibly have a beat piling ground. <laughs> So this is your backpack you're going to take on the uh, Pacific Crest Trail. Yes. And it's uh, packed just like that? Packed, pretty much ready to go, minus food and water. So as a backpacker, everything you need for six months is on your back. Yes. Although, of course, more food. You'll have to get more right. food as you go. Right. I'll be able to restock every few days, but I think there will be some longer food carries in the Sierras, maybe eight, ten days worth, so. So compared to uh, that, living out of your backpack, the, the minivan's a mansion. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, incredibly comfortable compared. It's very comfortable. Yeah. But so, I, I splurged. I bought a very heavy, very sturdy uh, sleeping pad because I'm getting older and yeah. I need someplace comfortable to sleep. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I bought, I'm bringing a pillow. That's my luxury item. So you'd kind of consider yourself an adventurer. Yes, out. Absolutely. I mean, anyone who's walking 2,600 miles by herself, that's that qualifies. It does. It does. A lot of us say we're adventurers, but uh, never really taking much risk. That's right. that's there's genuine danger along the trail. There can be. There can be. Yeah. But I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be a, an epic adventure, once in a lifetime thing. So, Michelle, if people wanted to follow you and see your adventures, how can they uh, follow you? Um, the best way to follow me would be on Facebook. I have a page called Final Destination Nowhere, or Now Here, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> and also on Instagram. I'm trying to get better about doing social media. I don't do YouTube, just I don't have the patience for that. But definitely you can find me on Facebook. Very it's good. Probably the best place. And people are welcome to contact you. Absolutely. I Very good. Help to answer any questions. If somebody has a question or a thought, I'd love to talk to them. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for sharing your life with us. I really appreciate it. I think you've inspired a lot of people. Well, thank you.
So folks, if you got anything out of this video, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Bye now.